Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's wait till some people pop up in here. Good morning, guys. What's up, Travis? Good morning, you guys. Let's let let's 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 let some people pop up in here, man. We got some things to talk about this morning, so uh, let's let some people pop up in here. Good morning, guys. Good morning. What's up, Prince? Good morning, champion. Prince, you need to give me an update, man, on how that uh that that conversation went with uh with our gentleman, man. So uh, shoot me an update. Shoot me a text at some point, man. Marcus, good morning, champion. If you're joining this stream, say what's up, man. Let me know what uh, what city you calling me, what city you joining me from, and what position you hold in the store, man. What city are you joining me from, and what position do you hold in the store? Good morning, everybody. We're going to wait for some more people to pop in here. William, good morning, champion. Charleston, West Virginia, huh? Nice. Anthony, what's going on, champion? St. Louis, huh? Man. Did a lot of business in St. Louis, champion. Lots of business up there, man. I know St. Louis well. Lots of business out there, my man. Miami, Florida. What's up, champion? Miami, Florida. I'm, I got to make a trip down there soon, man. I got to go down there and see my guys down at Cardone down there pretty soon, champ. Let's wait till some more people pop in here, man. We uh we got some conversation to do today, man. Mike, what's going on, champ? Call, uh, joining from West Virginia, huh? Nice. Chris, what's up, champion? West Virginia, too? Wow, West Virginia's in the house this morning, huh? Nice. All right. Well, we got some conversation we need to have this morning. Maryland, huh? Nice. What's up, Will? From Maryland. Man, I've done some business up in Maryland, too, man. The Timbrook Automotive Group was in Maryland. And I did some training, some F&I training up at the Timbrook Automotive Group, man. So Nice. Come on, come on, come on. Get your people in here. Get your people in here. Share the stream. Knock on some people's doors, right? Hit them in their inbox. Say, hey, Shaka Dyson is live this morning. FNI 20 group. Y'all need to join. What's happening? Right? We need to get us, we, we need to get fired up this morning. We need to get motivated this morning. We need to, we need to get focused this morning, right? Second half of the month is going down right now. Tony in DeKalb, Illinois. I know DeKalb, Illinois, man. Nice. You know I was in Chicago for three years, man. But uh, get your people in here. Let's rock and roll, man. Let's get your people in here. Let's let, let, let's rock. Let's get today started off right, man. Let's get the the second half of this month started off right, okay? Let's get the second half of this month started off right. It is, in fact, the 15th of the month. It's time to get it on. Daytona. What's up, champion? Daytona. And we're going to give it about uh, another minute, and then we're going to get started. We're going to give it another minute, and then we're going to get started up in this piece. Let me know, let me know that you're here. Let me know where you're where you, where you, uh, viewing from, and let me know what position you hold in your store. Connecticut, huh? Nice. All right, champions. So let, let, let's get started on this bad boy, man. I, you know, I come to you. I try to come to you every Tuesday and, uh, and, and, and drop some knowledge on you based on some of the conference calls. What stores in the St. Louis area did you help? The Napleton Group, man. The Napleton Group out there. I had three stores at the time. Now they got more. But uh, the Honda store, the Chrysler Dodge Jeep store, and also the Kia store out there in St. Charles. Um, but every Tuesday I try to come at, come, come to you and drop some knowledge on you and, and, and some focus and we got to get geared up, right? 
Here's what I want to talk about this morning, all right, based on some conference calls that I had earlier in the week and also last week. Listen, execution is king in F&I. Execution is king in F&I. Excuses are the slow death in F&I, right? Like, the one that goes after execution every single time adversity comes their way in F&I or every single time that they're met with a challenge in F&I, the one that goes after excuses versus the, the, the one that goes after excuses is the one that's going to go jump off a cliff. The one that goes after execution is the one that would succeed. Like, listen to me. It's the 15th of the month, right? The 15th of the month. If you had to close your month right now, Right this second, where would you be sitting? Would your goals have been met? Are you pacing ahead of your forecast? Are you pacing to hit your forecast? Or are you pacing behind your forecast? Right? Where are you sitting right now in relationship in relationship to your 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 dealership's benchmarks and your dealership's forecast? Where are you at? Because mind you, most dealerships out there should have goals, right? They should have benchmarks. They should have goals. They should have forecasts. They should have a target that they're trying to hit every single month, right? Now, if you had to close your month right now on the 15th, like when, 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 I, was, when I was in charge of the F&I group for all those stores, one of my stores down in West Palm Beach closed twice a month. They closed on the 15th of the month and the 30th of the month. They had two closes, each month. And I'm going to ask you guys, if you had to close right now, where would you be pacing? Right? And it's the 15th of the month. So I want you to reflect back right now and think about all the challenges you've had up to this point. And what direction, what approach did you take to those challenges? Did you go after execution or did you make excuses? Right? Because there's two outcomes. There can only be one outcome for each. Okay. If you go after excuses every single morning, if you go after excuses every single day, oh, you know, I couldn't, I'm not, I'm not hitting my number because of the cash deals, because they strip out all the lease payments, because all of the, the, the payments that come back to me are quoted to the penny, right? I had nine cash deals in a row, so I can't, right? They're, they're, they're skating me. The other F&I managers are skating me. They're cherry picking, so I'm not getting the good deals, right? There's a million, there's a million excuses you could come up with in F&I as to the reason of why you're not succeeding. But ex excuses are the slow death in F&I. What do I mean by that? What I mean is when you chase excuses versus chasing execution, when you're chasing excuses, the slow death comes via your career. You're slowly throwing your career down the drain when you chase excuses. You're slowly throwing your reputation down the drain when you chase excuses. You're slowly throwing your credibility in the dealership down the tubes when you chase excuses. You're slowly lacking the leadership in your dealership when you chase excuses. And I didn't even mean to make that rhyme. But you're slowly lacking leadership in your dealership when you chase excuses. Right? Excuses are the slow death. They are the slow death in F and I. What winners do and what your what your dealer is looking for is someone who doesn't chase excuses, but rather chases execution. Right? We all know this thing called F and I is filled with challenges. We all know this thing called F&I is filled with adversity. We all know this thing called F&I is the most micro-reported department in your dealership. We know that this thing called F&I is the highest, generates the highest revenue per square footage in your store. We all know that it is the most convoluted position to have in your dealership besides being an operator or GM. We all know that. That's why everybody in your dealership can't do F&I. Right? Because it is the most challenging, convoluted position in your dealership, period. You're, expe you're expected to perform no matter what the situation is. Right? You are expected to perform in the most challenging situations. Right? You are expected to generate revenue no matter what the circumstance is. Would you agree? Whether it's 9 o'clock in the morning or 11.30 at night. Whether it's one person financing a vehicle or five people in your office, 
Four of them being third baseman, and the one came in with a cashier's check, and they're ready to go, got to go, got to go, got to go, right? We are expected to perform and generate revenue in that same circumstance. Would you agree? So with that being said, in that same circumstance, what is it that you do in your store? This is what I want you to take account of right now. In that same, that same adverse circumstance, what is it that you generally do in your store? Be truthful. Be honest with yourself right now. Do you chase the excuse or do you chase the execution? Because let me tell you what comes along with execution. What comes along with execution is respect. What comes along, even if you fail, even if you fight the battle and you fail, what comes along with that execution is respect. Right, People will respect you for stepping up to the plate. Why? Because nine times out of ten, they would have a challenge stepping up to the plate themselves. So they admire and they respect those who do. What also comes along with chasing execution is job security. Job security. Right, you want job security, and you want to, and you're sick of being afraid that when you walk into your dealership the next day or the first day of the next month, that your job would be pulled from under you. That they got the next person for F and I waiting in the back office signing up the paperwork. Right, then chase excuses. Do what other people won't do. Do the hard thing. Right, do 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 the most challenging thing in your store. Chase execution. Why? Because execution is king and excuses are the slow death, right? People often say, hey, listen, man, you know, he, he, that dude's dying of disease. That dude's dying of, of this or dying of that, man. People die of excuses every day. It's just a matter of time, right? It's just a matter of when, not if. If they're chasing excuses, right? When you chase execution, that is the quickest way to promotion, right? Many of you are trying to get, pro I do, I do so many, I do many coaching calls throughout a week and the people say that are on the coaching call say, Hey man, you know, I'm trying to grow. Number one, I'm trying to get into F and I, number two, if I'm F and I in F and I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to grow outside of F and I, I even one day want to see my name on the building. Well, listen to me. You got to chase excuses. You got to get your knuckles bloody sometimes. You got to be willing to step in there and fight. You have to chase excuse. You have to chase execution and not chase excuses. Are you with me? This has got to be your laser focus back in F&I. Yes, it's challenging. Yes, it's hard. That's why everybody doesn't do it. But your credibility is on the line, right? Your job security is on the line. Your respect as a leader is on the line, right? And when you're at that fork in the road, you have to decide which way you're going to go. You're going to go excuses or are you going to go execution? Which one of these are you going to do, right? We got 15 days left in this month. It's the 15th of the month right now. You can look back on your month based on your performance and say, hey, all month long, I've been chasing excuses. All month long, I've been complaining. All month long, I've been telling my GM how many cash deals I had. All month long, I've been telling the desk that the customer that I had was a rocket scientist, right? Or that they had service contracts in the past and they never used them so they didn't buy a new one from me, right? All month long, I've been chasing these excuses, right? And I'm coming up short in my production. Or... You can take this opportunity right now, and based on your production, you can take the opportunity right now and say, hey, listen to me. I'm about to change the game up. I'm about to chase execution at all costs. I'm about to fight the battle at all costs. Because if I lose, at least I lose fighting. At least I lose swinging. At least I lose going to war. Right? I, at least I don't lose because I didn't try. Because I didn't give it a shot. Right? Listen, when you're chasing execution, okay, let me tell you what the process of chasing execution does for you. When you're chasing execution, it builds confidence inside you, right? When you chase execution, it builds expertise in your brain. It builds intelligence. It builds knowledge, right? But when you keep yourself in the dark because you'd rather chase excuses than execution, then then. There's no way to learn anything. You don't learn how to scrap. You don't learn how to battle. You don't learn what it's like to be there in the heat of the moment, in the close, when all the customers are telling you no, 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 right? When you've got that cashier's check staring you in your face. When you aren't used to battling, then you don't know how to maneuver in that instance. Would you agree?
It's because you've been chasing excuses. But when you chase execution, listen, it's like you've been there before. No matter what adversity, no matter what challenges you face at that point in time, it's like you've been there before. Why? Because you're used to fighting. You're used to chasing execution. And execution is king. It's king in F&I. So why don't people chase execution? Why? Number one reason. They don't know how. They don't know how to chase execution, right? They don't know. They don't. When they see adversity, when they don't see challenges, when when they don't see when they see adversity, and they see challenges in that dealership, they don't know how to supersede it. They don't know how to get through it. They don't know how to overcome it. They don't know how, right? This is why they don't chase execution. They are so used. To either A, having that deal handed to them with it packed full of products or packed full of rate spread, right? They're either, they're, they're so used to being hired on a, at a dealership and being called a manager so you automatically get credibility and respect, right? They're so used to beating up on the desk or beating up on the salespeople, right? Or complaining and whining until they get their way that, listen, they haven't chased excuses this entire time, this entire, for their entire career. So they don't know how to battle. They don't know what to do when the adversity comes, right? That's the first reason why people don't chase ex execution because they don't know how and they haven't had to. The second reason why is because they are unprepared, right? They're unprepared. And, and why are you unprepared? Because you haven't trained up to this point. You haven't trained them to this point. You haven't done what it takes to sharpen that ax and make sure that you execute and hit the goals of your dealership and your GM's goals, right? The forecast, the benchmarks that your F&I department has. You haven't trained yourself or prepared yourself to be successful in that F&I office. This is why you don't chase, this is why you chase, excuse, uh, this is why you don't change, don't chase, uh, execution. This is why Excuses are the preferred method for you because you are unprepared to chase the execution. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it requires battles, right? It requires getting scarred up. It requires getting bruised up. It requires getting bloody. It requires putting in that 12, 14 hours a day, right? It requires working every weekend at the month end. It requires putting in that work until you're dead tired. For F and I, it requires being at the dealership long after everybody else is gone to put in the work to submit all the deals so and get all the deals packaged up that you can and sent up to the office. It requires, it takes a lot out of an F&I manager to chase execution. But listen to me, the good ones, the good ones know that this is what they have to do. Those who chase execution don't complain. Those who chase execution aren't focused on what excuse they can come up with as to why they didn't succeed. They look for the opportunity in the failure so that they can fix it and they can succeed the next time. Woo! Did you hear what I just told you? Those who chase execution don't chase excuses. They don't come up with reasons as to why they came up short. They look for the opportunity and why they came up short so they can fix it and they can succeed the next time. That's the difference between those who chase execution versus those who chase excuses. And listen to me. When you're a person in your dealership that chases excuses, when you're a person in the automotive industry that chases excuses and complain, we all know who you are. You can't hide, right? The automotive industry is a big industry, yet the world is so small. We all know each other. The world is so small. Reputations, reputations get around in the automotive industry. I'm pleading with you this morning. I'm going to plead with you this morning on the 15th in the morning that you change your paradigm, that you change the way you approach things in F&I, that you put F&I back on top in your dealership. Because if you wonder, if you wonder why F&I gets the least amount of respect of any manager in your dealership, why? It's because they call us prima donnas because they believe that they, we complain. It's because they believe that they have to do our job for us because we chase excuses versus chasing execution. I want us to put F&I back on top. And how do we do it? Because we chase execution every single time.
No matter what the challenge is in our dealership, we're going to chase execution. Right, No matter what excuses they come up with in the dealership, we're going to chase execution. We're going to chase getting above and beyond every single adversity and every single challenge in our dealership to be successful. That's where that's the approach that I want us to take in our F&I department. Never mind what your sales desk is doing. They don't owe you nothing in the product. All they owe you is a car deal. Never mind what the salespeople are doing. They don't owe you anything in your dealership besides getting you a car deal. Never mind what the BDC is doing. They don't owe you anything in your dealership besides driving the traffic. That's all the BDC owes you. But what you owe, you owe to step up every time you're hit with adversity. You owe to step up every time you're hit with challenges. You owe to generate revenue in the hardest, in the hardest circumstance with no help. That's what you owe, right? You took the, you, you wanted to get into F&I before you ever got there. You wanted it so bad. You talked to people, you interviewed with managers and you said, hey, you give me the opportunity to step up in a dealership and this is what I can do for you. You give me a shot in F&I and this is what I can do for you. You didn't say, hey, you give me a shot in F&I and if it gets hard, I'm gonna make excuses. If it gets hard, I'm not going to try. If it gets hard, I'm going to complain. If it gets hard or if it gets challenging, I'm going to give up. I'm going to quit or I'm going to look for another job somewhere. That's not what you said. What you said was, is if you give me the shot, if you give me the opportunity, I'm going to step up and handle business. Well, this is what I need you to do. Why? Because we're trying to make F&I great again. Right? We're trying to put F&I back at the top of the total pole again. We're trying to push F&I. We're trying to get that greatness back into F&I. And for all the dealers, for all the dealers out there that watch this, for all the dealers, the general managers, and those that have authority in the dealership, listen to me. If your F&I manager is one that drops the ball constantly and then will make an excuse immediately versus focusing on the e execution and then turn around and talk about how long they've been in the business, listen to me. You better start, you as the dealer better start focusing on results versus your loyalty to something that's failing. You with me? There's a lot of, there's a lot of hungry lions out there that want the opportunity to be great in F&I. You need to start thinking about the, op the opportunity that you may want to give them. You may want to start thinking about that option, that option that says, hey, you know what? It's time for me to start focusing on results versus loyalty to somebody who's been in that office. Right? This is what you have to focus on. Those who focus on execution are king, are king. And those who focus on excuses are dying a slow death. Their career is dying a slow death. This is what I want you to think about this morning. What can you do differently starting this morning for your dealership? What can you do differently that you haven't done these first 15 days in your store to make it happen? Because I promise you it's not the cash deals. I promise you it's not the customers. I promise you it's not being quoted to the penny. I promise you, I promise you it's not the amount of customers walking in with a cashier's check. It's the lack of leadership from us and our dealerships as to why we're coming up short. Everything else is just a challenge. Everything else is just a formality. But listen to me. We were hired in that dealership to face those challenges and execute. Right? We were hired in that dealership to face those ch challenges and still generate revenue. We were hired to that dealership given the finance position title, finance manager position, right? And said, hey, we need to overcome these challenges and generate the revenue no matter how hard that circumstance is. This is what I want you to think about this morning and focus on this morning. F&I is, is greatness. F&I is, we are the, the highest we are the highest generating per square foot manager in that store. We generate revenue. That is our job. It's not generating revenue is not the job of your sales desk. Generating all the revenue is not the job of your salespeople. Their job is hard enough. We, we in F&I generate the revenue. Listen, if you don't know how to generate the revenue, get trained up. Step up, right? Skill up until you do. Skill up, all right? If you don't have the skill set to get it done, then listen to me. Get the skill set. 
All of us in F and I are smart people. That's how we got in F and I in the first place. I do not believe that there are any unintelligent people in F and I. Now, there may be some people who are unwilling to grow in F and I. There may be some people who are unwilling to learn in F and I, but I don't believe that there are any unintelligent people in F and I. So I'm going to tell you this. If you're coming up short and you don't know how to overcome these challenges, if you don't know how to lead the showroom floor, if you don't know how to go up to the desk and lead, if you don't know how to lead the results, I'm going to tell you something. Skill up. You have to skill up. You have to make sure that, you're, that you have the sharpest axe in your dealership. Right? Skill up. Last week I talked about getting what you're worth. The only way to get what you're worth and to chase execution and not excuses is to skill up. Right? If you're not there, get there. And even if you think you're there, continue to skill up. Because the difference between those who start lacking and those who are pushing ahead is the skill set. Right? There is no way that you went to training four years ago in F and I for four days. There's no way that you had training a week ago or, or four years ago for four days and you're in F and I for four more years and you haven't done more training. There's no way that you're keeping up. There is no way that you're winning that race, right? You need to stay skilled up. You need to constantly be sharpening your axe so that allowed that, that breeds that confidence inside you that allows you to face every challenge and look for the execution. Where is it that I can overcome? Where's the, there's the challenge, but how can I overcome it? How can I get in front of that challenge? What is it that I can do to beat that challenge? What is it that I can do to get above and beyond that challenge, right? Because understand this too. In the day's time or in a week's time or in your month, you're not going to face just one challenge, Right? These challenges are going to start happening over and over and over and over and over and over again, right? These people, it never ends. And then when this month shuts down, right, the new month begins, guess what? You're going to be battling challenges again. Lee said, staying sharp, learning new things is part of chasing execution. If you're not mentoring sales, Sales and junior F and I, you're not contributing. Man, listen to me. I couldn't agree more. You have to contribute every day. You got to contribute every day. Push for greatness in the F and I department. Leave no stone unturned. Approach execution every single day. Keep a great attitude. Lead on the sales floor. Stay your butt out on the sales floor. Right? Stay your butt up at the sales tower. Don't look for them to leave you room in the payment. Don't look for them to sell your product for you. Go out there and get it yourself. Listen to me. Execution. Right? Even if it's a cash deal, so what? Who cares? Go out there and take the TO. Right? Get familiar. Let them get familiar with who you are back in F&I so that we're not Count Dracula back there. So that we're not the shadow that people don't know. Right? Let them get familiar Right? Customers will buy from people they feel comfortable buying from. How do they feel comfortable? Credibility, familiarity, right? Go out there and get familiar. Stay out of your office today. It's the 15th of the month. Listen to me. I need you to stay out of your office. I need you to be focused on execution this morning. I need you to be focused on getting great this morning. I need you to be focused on pushing, pushing for that success this morning. I need you to be focused on staying away from excuses today. Right, if you find yourself giving an excuse today, I need you to give a quick checkup from the neck up. I need you to turn it around immediately. Okay? Excuses don't matter, executions do. All right? So listen to me. I want you guys to start off the last half of this month going after your targets, getting ready to hit your benchmark. All right? Get fired up, get motivated. We're F and I, baby. We're, we belong at the top of the total pole. We're bringing F and I, we're making F and I great again. All right? Now, I appreciate everybody being on this on this thread this morning. I appreciate everybody joining me live. Put everything on the table and go for broke. That's right, Derek. Nice. I appreciate all you guys this morning. Get inside your dealership and go for it this morning. Remember, execution is king and excuses are to slow death. All right, guys. I appreciate you guys being on here this morning. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.